What's that? And so where's your clothes that you need washed? No, I already washed them. They're in the dryer. Oh. Now you got it open and ready for you. They were washed, but I needed to dry them so you could use the washer. Hello everyone and welcome back. Just getting the last few things done. I watered the garden. Melissa and I are going to run up to the tent. I'm actually running up in the morning tomorrow. She'll run up tomorrow night after work, bring up the dogs. So this is going to be another two-part video because I'm going up in the morning and get everything opened up and then I'm going to be going over to my dad's. I think he's going to be up there around one o'clock to the backwoods cabin to the folks' place because the chimney, if you guys, I don't know if you guys saw that or not, if, how much I showed in the last video, but the snow, when it came off that metal roof, took the chimney for the workshop wood stove, and it completely dented it in and ripped the boot, the metal boot that goes through the metal roof. So anyway, I'm going to replace that and get the, uh, the wood stove that he got new pipe. We'll get that put in and everything, but... Uh, I don't know if you guys watch both channels, but uh, not this this weekend we're going to be at the tent. Then we're home for a weekend, and the following weekend after that, we're taking the fish house on its maiden voyage for us anyway, and we're going to take it camping for three days, well, two nights, three days, at a different lake that I've always wanted to fish. So Melissa and I have been getting everything ready in here. I mean, everything works good. The only thing that we had a problem with was the lights. So I went ahead and replaced every light on the outside as far as the, not the running lights, you know, when you're driving, but the lights that you, you have on at night. And once I replaced them all, everything just came to life. Works awesome. I see my camera's not <laughs> working all that well in that light. But anyway, yeah, it'll be the, we've stayed out here in the yard, spent a lot of time out here but we have not taken it fishing. And eventually, of course, this will be on the ice uh, next winter. We can't wait for that. And it's just gonna be some really nice ice fishing, but it's a RV edition, if you guys didn't watch the video on this. So it's fully insulated, it's got air conditioning, everything. So it's you can use it as a camper or as a fish house. I just got done washing it after I did the lights. And if you guys aren't familiar with this, I was surprised when I posted the video on the other channel that, you know, up here these are so common. You see them all the time, and other people had never even heard of it. Uh, it's got hydraulics, so I've got a little, it's almost like a key fob remote. And when I push that button, it lifts this whole thing up off the ground so I can just drive it down the road. When you get to where you're going, you go the other direction, it just drops it right back down on the ice or on the ground. And inside here, you know, it's fully set up. Kitchen, it's got a booth here that drops down into a bed. It's got another thing that drops down for another bed, or you can leave it up like that so you have more headroom. Refrigerator, like I said, everything's a mess because we're kind of moving in right now, getting ready for the camping trip. Lots of windows, which we have all the curtains on it right now. This is a booth that you can make into a bed, and we seem to like that better. Than this bed here which there's a switch over there on the wall and I can just it powers it down you know it'll come down to you know right about here I suppose and then you can climb up and that's a full queen up there also stereo there's the radio it has two TVs we've got one right here another one here in the kitchen so you can sit at this booth, or if you're sitting on that bed, you can watch TV, three burner uh, gas stove with the oven, microwave, full bathroom, toilet, sink, shower in here, nice little entry that right now is a mess because all my lights that I was doing <laughs> I've got all the old ones sitting right here. It was amazing because I had so much trouble with those lights and then it ended up being one that the other owner had added in that was causing all the trouble. And it was so, it was so happy that 
once I got that all done and turned them on and they worked and then I came out when it was nighttime. And it just looks so cool. Everything was finally lit up. It's got a little closet right in there. But yeah, it's a nice little place, 28 footer. I have a few videos of this thing, how it works and everything over on Northern Seclusion, but I realize that not all of you watch both channels. But anyway, we've been getting this ready for two weekends from now, or you know, after this weekend, two weekends. But when we take that up camping, I don't wanna take the boat that's at the tent. That one's been there forever. This is actually the trailer that goes with that boat. And I've got the trailer that goes with this boat up at the tent. But this is a much better trailer. So years ago, this is the boat that I was down in Louisiana. And when we sold that house, I then brought this back up here. So I've been getting this whole thing cleaned up, put new tires on it. And this is the boat that we're gonna take when we uh, bring the fish house to the campground up there. And I bought this boat motor from George. And if you guys watch this channel, you all know who George is. And this was his dad's. And we actually bought the, the boat and the motor. And Zachary needed a boat, so but he didn't need a motor. And I wanted this motor. It, you know, it has worked very well for them. So anyway, it hadn't been run for a couple of years anyway. So Zachary took it and went through the carburetor, just made sure that everything runs good. But he didn't pop it in the water and I don't know about the impeller. And, I, and I've never run the motor before, so I don't know his personality. Uh, George said it usually always started on the second pull, and Zach said after he went through the carburetor, made sure everything was clean, it popped off on the second pull, but he only let it run for like just a few seconds, you know, because it wasn't in water. So anyway, we're gonna take this up to the tent and use this boat this coming weekend just to see if it all works good, because if the impeller doesn't work on it, I'll have to get that fixed and I won't have time I don't think to tear it before we go so then I would grab the tent motor and bring that with me to the other lake but oh the mosquitoes I can't imagine how bad they're going to be at the tent they were horrid when we were up there two weekends ago and the black flies I call them gnats but maybe they're black flies I don't know but they were horrible so anyway Melissa and I are going to do fishing but the first part of the video I'm going to get up there get this boat in the water and then go help my dad work on the backwards cabin workshop and then when Melissa gets up there, like I did the last time, I'll switch it over to, you know, fishing at the tent, and that'll be on the Northern Seclusion channel. So right now I'm gonna go in and finish packing my clothes up and everything. I've got all the dry foods already in the truck. The frozen stuff is in the freezer in the garage here. I'll grab that in the morning. And tomorrow morning, I suppose around seven o'clock, I don't know, 6.37, we'll hop in the truck and head north. And then once I get back and we're settled in here, I'll go through and do a video, bring back the this year's garden series. Now that we pulled the hay bales out of this garden and went back into the dirt, uh, I'll let you know everything I have planted in here. And we'll watch how this garden grows because this one is potatoes and onions. And I've been getting this question a lot. Why am I using this for camping versus taking the fifth wheel? First of all, we need to try this out and see how everything works for ice fishing. Second of all, this is a bumper pull and it weighs 7,000 pounds. The fifth wheel weighs 14,000 pounds. My truck doesn't have a problem pulling either of them, but the fish house is just a lot easier to pull. A fifth wheel is pretty dang big behind your truck. See you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. I have a few stops to make, but heading to the tent. I take that back. We're going back to the house because I forgot to grab the food out of the fridge and the freezer. Let's try that again.
one thing Melissa and I are trying to get away from is I get so sick and tired of using the uh, plastic bottled water, you know? And uh, so we bought some of those five gallon water things that you see like in a, at an office, the water dispenser, them clear plastic. And right up here, they have an artesian well that you can fill your water up for free and it's just not very far off my path here that I'm going so I brought one of them up here we've got three of them we're gonna use one at the tent in the summer months not the winter uh, one in the fish house camper and I'm not, not sure if the other one is going in the house or what it's gonna happen but I'm gonna fill the first one up this morning we wouldn't always have to come here to fill it up but a lot of people that are going up north and going camping, stop here and fill up their water. I've never been here before and now it's taken me down a dirt road and it's a dead end. It just took me to an artesian well. <laughs> The place I'm going to is supposed to have two spigots where people fill up and they test it four times a year. That's not what I'm looking for right there. I think we're just gonna skip it this time and go to the tent and I still have bottled water up there. I need to do a little bit more research. Never come down into Duluth this way. What a view. Finally getting back down on the interstate. It's causing me anxiety driving through all that, pulling the boat. got a message from Zachary on my phone and I'm driving northbound and he was in the other lane driving southbound going to work. You notice my truck with the boat behind it. Told him I wish him and I were going fishing today. Well, I got some worms and holiday and now I'm going to stop at Super One and get ice and something else. I think lettuce. I've got a little list. Well, right when I was pulling into the parking lot, Melissa called me and I told her about how I couldn't find the artesian well and that I was just going into Super One. And Super One has a place where you can fill those with it's like reverse osmosis or whatever, pure drink. Anyway, I brought it in there and filled it up. 39 cents a gallon, and I got five gallons. First thing I'm going to do is I want to put this boat in the water and see if that impeller works and it starts up and everything. And then I can just pull the trailer back to the tent and then when my dad gets here or when Melissa gets here, I have him run me down and I can get in the boat and bring it over to the tent.
it seems to work okay. Uh, I'm not used to a Johnson motor. I know what a Mercury sounds like, and I'm sure all the old Johnsons sound the same because at first it was like it's only running on one cylinder. But when I get out there, it opens up real nice. So the throttle on it is real stiff compared to the Mercury that I'm used to. But uh, we'll use it this weekend, see how it works. Like I said, it seemed to work fine. I adjusted the tilt uh, as far as I could go. Like it was one click up, so I went all the way down so the front end of the boat doesn't come up so much. But once there's two of us in here, that'll be different. Um, yeah, I don't know. It feels different, but it sure seemed to work good. Let's head over to the tent. It might only be almost 60 degrees in here right now, but 73, my phone said it's going for 77 today. Not a lot of wind out there. Bugs are at the, now it wasn't the black flies as bad as it was the mosquitoes, but there were still them little gnats or black flies out there too. I want to start the air conditioner right away to keep it cool in here. Melissa saw a thing that if you burn coffee grounds, just let them smolder, it works great for keeping the bugs away. So I bought the cheapest coffee I could get at the store. Uh, I'm going to give it a try and see if it helps.
people are always saying how these thermal cells work really good too, but I've never had any luck with them at all. Not much wind today though. Put it by the back door and see if it helps from getting any of them in here when I'm bringing stuff in. So right now I've got the coffee ground smoldering, I've got one of these citronella candles going, and then I fired up a tiki torch before the wind was coming this way. Melissa can't be around those things, that smoke just kills her lungs, but for now let's just keep try to keep the mosquitoes away from the front door. So, And I got the thermal cell on by the back door just to keep the bugs out of the tent. Once you're out on the lake, things aren't bad fishing, but flies are here too. Oh, these are deer flies. Once the deer flies start, it's, you know, you just kind of, you don't come up here as much until fall. And just because of those, they're so annoying. I can never get those citronella candles to stay lit. But I don't know, I mean I fogged it, which will, that only keeps them away for a short time. And they're not really buzzing right now, so I'm going to put one of these on the other side of the porch by the uh, barbecue. Maybe it'll keep them away. It looks like with this water dispenser, which is a brand name Primo, only fits on Primo bottles. How stupid. Why wouldn't you send an adapter so it would fit on any bottle? <laughs> and if I don't have an airtight seal, it won't work and I can't get it to work. I'm just cooking up a few brats for lunch. I did bring up hamburgers. They're in the cooler. I brought up pork spare ribs. I think we're going to be cooking those up. And yeah, maybe we'll do a fish fry. Since we're only up here tonight, and Melissa really doesn't eat anything for dinner, she'll just have something small. So usually our big meal is lunch. So I don't know if we'll do a fish fry. We're only up here tonight and tomorrow night, so we'll see what happens. But for now, I just I did bring the burgers up so we can have them if we want. And I did bring buns, both hot dog and hamburger. And then I just brought up the usual snacky stuff. All 
ketchup and mustard because everything out here is out of date. <laughs> brought a few of these like single serving vegetable cans because if it's just me eating I hate to open up a whole can then I gotta bag it and put it in the fridge let's see I need a plate and a bun today is flying by it's already 1235 Well, my dad said he was going to be up here by 1 o'clock, and it's after 1.30, and he's not here yet. But I thought I'd come over and jump up there and see what's going to, what it's going to take to get that roof jack taken out of there and the new one put in. I'll have to wait till he gets up here. He was up there and took most of the screws out. There was one left, but I need a flat bar to get underneath that metal roof because they've glued it before the metal piece went down. So it's really in there good and I'm gonna need a, and I couldn't find one in his workshop, so maybe he has one in his truck. Man, the black little flies are horrible over here. Well, my dad made it up here and finally got me over here to the boat landing so I can bring this back to the tent. Well, I got the boat back here to the tent. Yeah, that, that thing does, it's totally different than the other motor and it's just gonna take me a while to get used to. It's like when you're driving it, it, it's like it pulls to the, I don't know if it's the right or left, like you have to hold on to the, to the tiller because it's constantly, like if you were to let go of the tiller, it would immediately just slam to one side and you'd go in a circle. And I suppose that's just the way the prop is. It's just not like that with the other motor. You could actually let go and it'll go straight, you know, for a while. So it'll take a little bit of getting used to. I just talked to Melissa for a few minutes on her ride home from work. Most of her ride home was done when my dad was driving me over there. And uh, now she is packing her stuff in the truck and I imagine within a half hour she'll be on the road and headed up here, which will be exciting. Today, now, right now, it's 77 degrees. Tomorrow's high is only 62 or 64. There's a front coming through, and I bet you there's going to be some wind tomorrow. I mean, look at that lake. It's just beautiful today. When we were at the boat landing, uh, this morning when I was there, a guy pulled up. He was going to put a boat in the water, and I had my truck, and I don't even know if that was on, on film or not. I don't think I had. I don't know if I had the camera going. Anyway, 
And I, I, so I was going to move my truck, and he goes, no, 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 just go ahead and wait. I'm just going to test out this boat. And then he walked back to, like, untie it and everything, and, he says, and then he came back and said, the, boat, the battery's dead. He said, don't worry about it. So anyway, now here we are hours later, and Dad and I went back there, and, and then he was at the boat landing, but not with the boat. And he comes driving out, and he rolled down the window, and he knew who my dad was. My dad didn't know exactly who he was right away. And then the guy said, he goes, I'm, a Chuck was, it was my dad. And Chuck was a guy that, I mean, my dad knew forever. A long, you know, he lived up here. Every single year, he would bring my dad in the fall a bottle of his homemade wine. Every single year. And now my dad hasn't seen, you know, seen him for a few years. And my dad said, is Chuck still around? And uh, his son said, no, he died two years ago. So then my dad was kind of quiet after that. My dad says that a lot. You know, he's going to be 80 years old in August. And, you know, all of the people that he used to talk to up here, um, the, you know, he used to go down to the restaurant all the time, the nearest restaurant, and he would have breakfast. He would complain about that breakfast every time, but he would go down there so he could talk to the guy because they'd been talking for years. He died. You know, my dad says that everybody that he knows is dead. So my dad was a little quieter on the, the ride home. Just one more person that he'll never see again. And I suppose that's what you deal with as you get older. It's sad. Since this video is just about over because Melissa will be on her way up, I thought oh, I'm going to go out and cast a few times. Her and I will be out, I'm sure, later tonight. Those old float planes. Look at the gnats. <laughs> they always sound the same. That sounds like the DNR ones. I can't remember what kind they are, but... I'm debating, now that I have that trailer up here, I may just grab this boat when I, and bring it home. I think it's the boat that I like better. This boat, I like better than that boat. We'll see. Okay everyone, well thanks a lot for watching. I'm gonna end this one now since Melissa is just about ready to come up here. So the second part of this, just like opening fishing, will be on northern seclusion. It's warm out, the bugs are bad. Hopefully the fish will be biting. I will see you guys on the next video.